So I have a, I think I have a great role. So my role is more or less like a kind of a harlequin or a joker that brings presents. And these presents are in, in a style I really like what Gregorio said with Tempieto, how it travels. Huh? So you have this building and then it travels around. So let's think of books in this way and let's take the idea of, of the library of Werner Oxlin and the beautiful thing about that library is the way how the books are arranged in this library. So the books are arranged in a way that they like each other. So traveling of houses and the affairs among books are the basic ingredients of what I'm going to, to give you. So it's a, it's a gift and it's a story. Huh? So what if we say that books and concepts are alive, which means that they have friends, they have lovers, they hate each other, they like each other, they go in wars, they make love, and so on. The implication of this is that there is no such a thing like a fixed meaning of a book. We don't know what Aristotle meant when he wrote his books. We don't have a clue what Vitruvius meant when he wrote his books. We have different translations of it, and every translation gives another facet. The same thing if we take this assumption that books and concepts are alive, works with concepts. So they travel through time, they travel through space, they travel through different books, and so on. What happens if we approach all of these things from the from the digital, from the perspective of social media, from the perspective of information technologies, from the perspective of internet and so on, then actually we can start playing with this in a, in a quite serious and at the same time in a funny way. Yeah? So for instance, in a classical manner, concepts travel through time. Yeah? So you, you have a certain concept, then you have its etymology, and then you, by looking at its etymology, you see how it's morphing through time. Or for instance, if you go to Google Engrams, you can see how popularity of certain concepts is changing. In space, how they travel through space. It's a translation from one language to another, and then they are just kind of moving in between different languages. If we apply computation on top, we can synthesize these kind of games. So we can do synthetic relationship in between, or not in between, between the concepts and between the books. In the same way, if a book goes from one library to another library, it's going to change the way how it behaves. So it sounds kind of funny, but I think it's true. Therefore, the, the library, which is a gift and a story for you, it's called xenoteca. I'm sure you know these terms like xenophobia, xenophilia, there is even a kind of Xenofeminism, it's a very nice feminism, you should read this. So there is also a xenoteca. Huh? Xenoteca, so it's a teke, it's a Greek word which means a kind of a box or a chest. And xeno is this strange thing around it. So xenoteca says all the books, or any book is welcome if it shares what it thinks, or if it shares its ideas and concepts. So this is the name of xenoteca. And this is a gift for you. Yeah? So you have it, you, here you have the URL, you just go there, you have more than 1,500 books, and all these books are ready to share what they are thinking, and they are just a click away. Yeah? So it's like when Martin starts talking about Vitruvius, you have four different versions of Vitruvius. You have the, the, the contemporary one from the beginning of the 20th century, you have a Baroque one, and you have a Renaissance one, I think these four. And then you can look how Vitruvius is traveling through time and changing the ideas it has. All these books you just click. If you want a PDF, here is the PDF, you click, immediately you have a PDF, you can start reading. So it's 1,500 books at your fingertips directly. If you need to do some, if you are very good in programming, and I suppose you all are, then you just take, for instance, a text file, and you have kind of raw text, and you can start directly computing with these with this kind of things. 
But of course, this is just half of the story. So Xenoteca has its other side. Yeah? So you can think of Xenoteca as a library, but it's a digital library, it's a computational library, and this is actually the database of this thing. The other side of it is a way how to navigate it and how to, how to search it. And this is the, the face of Xenoteca. And the face of Xenoteca is called Ask Alice. Yeah? So Ask Alice is a search engine that allows you to read, not a book, but to read the whole library. And all of these things, so the best thing with, with this presentation is you don't have to do anything. Yeah? So if you want, you can use it. If you don't want, you don't have to do it. But I think it's really fantastic. Huh? If you choose, for instance, the library here, which is the name Xenoteca, which contains all the books, since it's your kind of beginning of your adventure around architecture, let's choose a topic of conversation, which is architecture. And let's ask Alice, what is architecture? And then, in the beginning, maybe you want to be a little bit fixed and precise, then you go with fine. If you relax a little bit, you can go into the explore mode. And now we have 15,000, 1,500 books trying to tell us what architecture might be about. Huh? And for instance, this guy says, architecture is the key to everything. <laughs> I would say, okay, let's forget this. <laughs> And then you go and you can start looking around. The architecture is fresh, but empty. This sounds a little bit better, huh? This sounds a little bit intriguing. Then you say, okay, this is interesting. What is this? Then you can load more. You get a little bit more results. Or for instance, if you click here, you can see how this guy, but they are all alive, huh? So these guys are all alive, so it's not Rem Kohas, it's Rem Kohas elements of architecture. You can see how does this guy, how is he looking at the whole library? So it's a kind of an x-ray of, of the book in the context of a library. Yeah? Look at this, this now becomes kind of a little bit of science fiction. Huh? So this is a, a, a way how Rem Kohas elements of architecture is looking at the, at the whole Xenoteca, and then this here, are his favorite concepts here. Huh? And of course, there are elements of architecture. Yeah? It's a corridor, it's a stair, it's a floor, it's a roof, it's a ceiling, glass, squat, and so on. So all these things are things that he cares about. While these other things which are around are things that he doesn't care about. But look at this now, when it gets kind of interesting. Huh? How the Tempieto was able to travel from different places. Now let's try to think what happens to architecture, for instance, when it's traveling through different times. So if we ask another library, what is architecture? For instance, library of Homer's friends. Homer's friends are more or less all coming from ancient, ancient times. Yeah? You just change the library, you go here to find, and then you get kind of a different flavor of things. Yeah, what this architecture might be about. Now I will not go into detail, but then you have, for instance, the library of St. Augustine's friends. You have a library of Shakespeare's friends, Rousseau's friends, and you have a kind of a complicated contemporary library, library of Serre's friends. These are uh, philosophers from, from France, this kind of, they would call them post-structuralists. Post yeah? So you can get very different flavors by traveling through time of a, of a certain of a certain idea. Since we don't have a lot of time, I will show you a few links that, that you can use, which will give you a kind of a context towards uh, uh, what's going on. So what what I want to also say that this project of Xenoteca, so it's it's a collaboration of between, so it's me from the University of Innsbruck. I have an assistant professorship there, and I teach here Studio Meteora. It's Ludger Hollerstadt with Digital Architectonics, and Martin Delbecke from the History and Theory of Architecture that you've already met. So three of us kind of together 
uh, uh, this, this thing here. Xenoteca itself is a digital library of an architectural student. So think of it as a context, a neighborhood, a galaxy. Yeah? And this, more or less, I said, what's, why, how this library is different than other libraries is that it's very specific in its interest. So it's not a library that wants to cover the whole world. It's not Google. It's a library which is interested in architecture, it's interested in mathematics, physics, and it's interesting in philosophy. And then it's surfing and navigating around those things. To search it, you have Ask Alice. If you are interested in what, what, kind, of, if, what kind of theoretical background is behind, you can look at it in the play among books. So it's, it's a book that Alice and I wrote, wrote together. You can download it directly from, uh, from Xenoteca. It's there as well. This can be a kind of an inspiration how to work and how to play with these things. Because the whole book is written through a conversation and through a game with, with Alice. And then, for instance, here you can see if <coughs> If we take uh, a serious book from architecture, for instance, uh, why is this not zooming? Yeah, bravo. So this is what happens to, for instance, Le Corbusier when he's traveling through different galaxies. He's changing his face. So if you want to know a little bit more about these things, you can check it in, a, in, in this book. A full talk about it is here. So here you have one hour YouTube talk where I talk exactly about who is Alice, how is she working, what's the relationship between architecture, information technologies, and all of these things. And here, when you go to the question mark, you have a, a way, so you have two small tutorials on how to actually work and write with these things. What is beautiful with this game is that you can actually write in terms of other people. Yeah? And I'm kind of trying to elaborate and explore, and explore these, these ideas here. More stuff around Alice, Xenoteca and so on can be found on this, uh, uh, this YouTube channel. And at the bottom, so here you have different talks around it, and at the bottom, you have presentations from the Studio Meteora. It's a design studio which intensively works with all these tools, so with Xenoteca, with us, Alice, and so on. So, I would invite you to at least take a look. Always, you can look for, for books here. There are 1,500 books. If by any chance you don't have a certain book that you like, there is always a very nice, other library where you can find many titles. This is Library Genesis. Here you have more than two million uh, different books ready to download. Huh? The point is with these games is that you are fast and that you work with a lot and that you don't care about what things mean. You have to put your own meaning on top of this game and then everything becomes in a way interesting and playful. Thank you.